Welcome to my economy guide for set 6. With the addition of Hextech Augments, we have to approach our economy management in a different way. In this video, I will cover how to manage our economy on stage 1 until the end, how to play if you want to go for a bunch of 3 stars, and lastly, how our leveling and rolling patterns change with the different Hextech Augments. We start off on stage 1, and most people think this stage doesn't matter, but there are a couple of different things we can do here to give us an advantage. On stage 1, 3, and 1, 4, we can sometimes get 10 gold early if we get a ton of gold from the orbs, and this allows us to start stacking interest gold early, but more on interest gold later. To maximize our odds of this happening, we can play one of these units, and they will be able to solo this round. This is important as the earlier you hit 10 gold, the earlier you will hit 20 gold, 30 gold, and eventually 50 gold. If you get ahead of everyone else in terms of generating interest gold, you will get to the higher levels faster, and you will get powerful 2 star 4 costs or 5 cost units before everyone else. In addition, it allows you to hold onto more pairs and potentially hit more 2 stars in the early game as well as the mid game. On stage 1 4, we can choose to pre level to 4. We do this by buying 4 XP to be 4 out of 6 XP. Since we get 2 gold naturally every turn, we start stage 2 1 by being level 4, and therefore we also get a level 4 shop. This allows us to see 3 cost units, which can open up more synergies like mercenaries and mutants early game. The downside of pre-leveling is that we lower our odds of hitting 1 cost units, and it will also take us longer to hit 10 gold. Therefore, only pre-level on 1-4 if you're looking for a specific 3 cost unit, or you don't need to find any more 1 cost units. How often I personally pre-level to 4 depends a lot on what strategy I'm going for and what the current meta is. In some patches I pre-level almost every game, and on some patches I rarely pre-level at all. On stage 1-4 you will also pick your first Hextech Augment, so know that if you pick an Augment that impacts your economy, your playstyle will change. I will go over the Augments that alter your economy playstyle at the end of the video. Stage 2 is when we start fighting other players. Our goals here in terms of economy is to build up our economy to a decent size. We do this by hitting the interest thresholds to get additional gold, while also trying to either loss streak or win streak to generate even more gold on top of that. There are four main ways of generating gold in TFT. We have base income, winning PvP rounds, interest gold, and streak bonuses. Since we can only control interest and streaking, those are the ones we focus on the most. Interest gold is very basic. The more gold you have, the more gold you will get every turn. Streaking works similarly. The higher your streak is, the more gold you get every single turn. Therefore, we almost always want to continue the streak that we're currently on in the early game, as this stage is all about generating as much money as possible to set ourselves up for a strong mid and late game. If you have a weak board in the early game, try and go for a 5 loss streak. This means that your goal is to sacrifice your HP by playing a weaker board, but in return you get way more gold. The strategy here is to hit interest thresholds as fast as possible, and by playing a weak board, you will get a lot of money from the loss streak bonus as well. Don't be afraid to sell off pairs to make 10 or 20 gold, and your general guidelines here is to have 10 gold on stage 2-2, 20 gold on stage 2-5, and at least 30 gold or more on Krugs. We do not level at all when playing for a loss streak on stage 2. The only time you will ever level is on the Krugs round itself where you can level to 5 to make sure you win that round. If you have a strong board in the early game, you want to try and win as many rounds as possible. We are less worried about making interest gold as we are maintaining our HP high, and we also generate gold from win streaking as well as from winning PvP rounds. Your general guidelines when playing a win streak opener is to be level 4 on stage 2-1. If you get a lot of gold on stage 1, you can go level 5 on stage 2-2, or you can go level 5 on stage 2-3, but I'm not a big fan of this as it is very expensive, so if you don't keep winning, your econ is in a rough spot. In addition, stage 2-3 is on what we call a bad interval. Here I am on stage 2-3, and if I want to level to 5, it costs me 8 gold. But if I wait until the next round, it only costs me 4 gold. This way, we save 4 gold by just waiting one turn, but... Being level 5 on this turn may be the difference between keeping and losing your winning streak. By stage 2-3, you want to either pre-level to 5 or make 10 gold. You will pre-level when there are units that you want to keep, or if you simply can't make 10 gold while you're also looking for 2 and 3 cost units. 
The reason why you never exclusively pre-level for shop odds here is because you only have a 2% chance for 4 costs and a 5% chance for 3 costs. If you pre-level instead of making 10 gold here, you're paying 1 gold for a 7% better shop for only one turn. At stage 2-5, you want to be level 5 with at least 10 gold. By the time you get to Krugs, you should be level 5 with at least 30 gold. Most of the time, you will not have a weak or strong board, and you will be mixed streaking. The most important thing to do in that case is to play towards your current streak. That means that if you start off by winning the first round, you try and win as many consecutive rounds as possible. Once you lose, you will generally try and lose the next rounds as well. In these situations, your general guidelines are to be level 4 on stage 2-1, make 10 gold by stage 2-3, level to 5 on 2-5, if you're still on a win streak, have 30 gold by Krugs. There is a lot more complexity behind win, loss, and mixed streaking, so if you want to learn more, check out my early game guide that will be linked down in the description. But know that you can always force a loss streak, but you can't reliably force a win streak. The mid game starts on stage 3. Much like on stage 2, we want to keep playing into our streak. But here we start taking more damage, so we have to be more careful. Your playstyle from here will depend on your current streak, your HP total, your current board strength, and most importantly what comp you're planning on playing. Your strategy will depend a little from comp to comp, but most comps want to get to level 8 to get 2 star forecasts and some legendaries into their board. Some comps have to roll at level 8 as they're running very expensive units, and some can get away with rolling at level 7 as they are running less expensive units. If you are win streaking, you can level to 6 on stage 3-1. This is to put in another unit to maintain our streak. It is pretty expensive though, so let me explain the consequences here through an example. So here I am on stage 3-1, and it costs me 20 gold to level. If I level, I go down to 19 gold, and if I win the round, I go up to 20 gold. And from there, I get 2 gold from interest and 5 gold from base income. Here I am on a 3 loss streak though, so I'd like to continue that for now until I get very low in HP. But if I was on a 3 win streak at this point, I would go up to a 4 win streak and get plus 2 gold from winning. This way, I get plus 9 gold in total. Next round, I will have 29 gold. And if I win that one, I will get 3 gold from interest as I go up to 30 gold, 5 gold base income, and 3 gold from the win streak. That's 11 in total, and gets me to 41 gold. If I win round through 3, I will get to 53 gold, and the lack of interest gold is now recovered. However, if I leveled on stage 3-1 and lost my streak, I would have to sell a unit to make interest, and I would only get 6 or 7 gold, then 8 gold next turn, and 9 gold after that. In total, I'm missing out on around 10 gold in total if I level and lose, so you have to take the opportunity cost into account whenever you're considering leveling on 3-1. This is probably one of the harder things to understand about economy management, so don't beat yourself up if it doesn't make sense right now. But make sure that if you are leveling and dropping low on interest gold, then you need to make sure you're winning the next round to recover the lack of interest gold. On stage 3-2, it is very common to be level 6. The only times you don't level is if you're lost streaking and planning on rolling at level 7 instead, if you drop below 30 gold after leveling to 6, or if you have nothing good to add in and you don't want to roll here. I personally level to 6 in about 80% of my games. On stage 3-2, you can also roll at level 6. This is done in a couple of scenarios. If you're win streaking and you need to get a little stronger to maintain the streak, if you're lost streaking and now you want to power spike and start win streaking, you're sitting on multiple pairs, you're looking for multiple units that would spike your board, and how much you roll here depends on your total HP, how much gold you have, and how many pairs you're sitting on. Before you roll, you need what is called an ILP, which stands for Intention, Limit, and Potential Pivot. Your intention should be clear before you roll. What exact units are you looking for? And what is your reason for rolling in the first place? Is it to hit your pairs and make them 2 stars? Are you bleeding out and you need to power spike? Are you looking to complete a synergy? Or do you need direction towards a comp? It is crucial to plan ahead in TFT, so never press that D key before you have your intention clear. Your limit means how deep you are willing to roll. Gold is a limited resource in TFT, and the more gold we have, the easier it is to get more gold. 
In other words, if we roll too deep, we will fall behind in the lobby in terms of econ. To know your limit, you need to think back at your intention for rolling. Someone who is bleeding out and has a really weak board will need to roll through a lot more gold than someone who is just looking to hit a couple of pairs. Your potential pivots refers to other comps and carries you can play this game. If you have made AD items and you're planning on playing Ergon, but you see a Jin in your shop when rolling, then you can most likely pivot to Jin carry in most cases. By being aware of our potential pivots, we are making sure we don't miss out on any big opportunities. On stage 3-5, we can level to 7. Much like on 3-2, only do this if you're staying above 30 gold after leveling. The reason for the 30 gold amount has again to do with opportunity cost, so if you drop from 50 to 30 gold, you only lose out on 2 gold, the next turn you will only lose out on 1 gold, if you hit 40, and then you will get to 50 2 turns later. In total, you're only paying 3 gold to put in an extra unit, and also to see 2 level 7 shops instead of level 6 shops. But the only times you will have enough gold to level to 7 on stage 3-5 is if you have been heavy win streaking or loss streaking throughout the entire game, and much like on 3-2, you can decide to roll on stage 3-5. The times I roll here is if I've been loss streaking for the entire game, or I am win streaking and I need to hit a couple of pairs to maintain the win streak. As explained before, make sure to have an ILP before you roll at any point in the game. Once you get to stage 4, the late game starts. People start getting low on HP, and you will take even more damage here. On stage 4-1, you want to level to 7. And from here, it is all about figuring out whether you want to roll at level 7, or if you can go for a fast 8. This depends a lot on what comp you're playing, and the overall situation in the lobby. But here are some general guidelines. You want to roll down at level 7 if you're 70 to 60 HP or lower, your board is weak compared to the rest of the lobby, you're looking for a 3 cost or 4 cost carry, your team is not reliant on any legendaries, and if many other people are also rolling down here. Again, these are just general guidelines, so feel free to experiment and break these rules for different comps in different situations. But if you are a newer player, I recommend you follow these rules to a T until you get a better overall understanding of the game. As always, have your ILP before you roll. But you are looking to stabilize off of a 1 star 4 cost carry or a 2 star 3 cost carry in most cases. In addition, you will also want to 2 star the majority of your board and or hit a big vertical synergy that your carry benefits from. In general, try not to roll below 20 gold here, as you need to make it to level 8 on stage 5 to keep up with the rest of the lobby. But in some cases, when you get unlucky and don't hit anything, you might just be stuck donkey rolling at level 7 for the rest of the game, meaning you roll down every single turn until you 2 star the important units. This is used as a strategy to avoid 8th places, which are more important than you think. You want to do a fast 8 in the cases when you are 70 plus HP, few people are rolling down, your board is relatively strong, and you're high on gold, meaning more than 50 after leveling to 7. The goal from there is to be level 8 on stage 4-5 or 5-1, and then all in for your team comp there. You will generally stop rolling once you have 2 starred all non-legendary units. The hardest part about stage 4 is recognizing when you can fast 8 and when you have to roll at 7. So don't feel bad if you make the wrong call, but know that if you're in doubt, it's generally better to roll at level 7. At stage 5, everyone knows what comp they're playing, and the player damage starts to ramp up quite a bit here. Already on stage 5-1, a lot of players are all inning for their comps, meaning they roll to 0 gold in order to hit everything. Therefore, we want to level to 8 on this stage, if we have not already. Before we roll, we need an ILP. It will be different from comp to comp, but here is a general case. The intention when rolling on stage 5-1 is to roll until we hit all our core non-legendary units to start. The limit is 0 gold, as everyone else is usually all in here, and we need to get as strong as possible as fast as possible. From there, we can keep donkey rolling until we hit everything we need to hit. The potential pivots depend a lot, but in general, it is extremely hard to pivot this late into the game. It is possible, but very hard. So most of the time, you need to have a comp in mind before you roll down. Another option is to level, but not roll and go for a fast 9. 
but that requires you to have high rolled for almost the entire game so far, and it's not something you can pull off often. I go for a fast 9 in about 5-10% to of my games, and if you want to fast 9, the goal is to level to 9 on either stage 5-5 or 6-1 depending on how much gold you have. And in those scenarios, you're often rolling for a 2-star legendary as your main carry. Now let's go over how the economy management differs when playing reroll comps that want to always 3-star their main carries. Your strategy depends on whether you are 3-starring 1-cost units, 2-cost units, or 3-star units. For 1-cost carries, we will hyperroll a little at level 4, and then slow roll for the rest at level 5. Therefore, we never want to level in the early game as we want to save up as much gold as possible. In addition, when we are staying lower level, we have a higher chance of seeing 1-cost units in the shop. The overall goal is to get to 50 gold as fast as possible. This way, we start stacking up additional money so we can have a gigantic rolldown at level 4. You will commonly pair this with a 5 loss streak on stage 2 to gain additional gold. Once you get to round 3-1, you should have 8 out of 10 XP towards level 5 and hopefully more than 50 gold in the bank. You will roll down to 35 gold at level 4 here. The reason we stop at 35 gold is because we will be 40 plus gold on 3-2 and then back at 50 gold on stage 3-3. This way we lose out on 3 gold but we get to roll more at level 4 where we have a higher chance of 1 cost units. You can also hyper roll until you hit your 3 stars on 3-1. But this depends a lot on which comp you're playing, so don't hyper roll all the way down unless it's part of how to play a specific comp. At stage 3-3 you will have 50 plus gold, and from there you slow roll until you hit your 3 star units. Which means to roll down to 50 gold every single turn. The game plan after that will depend on the comp you're playing. But in the majority of cases, the plan is to get to as high of a level as possible, which is going to be level 8 in most cases, then roll down to add in legendaries and 2-star 4-cost units to your team. If you are 3-starring 2-cost units, you want to slow roll at level 6. The early game strategy is to save up as much gold as possible so we can start slow rolling faster. This can often be paired with a 5 loss streak, but since we never hyper roll for 3-star 2-cost units, we can also level and play aggressive in the early game. The goal is to be level 6 with 50 gold or more by stage 3-5 at the latest. Once you hit your desired 3 stars, the game plan depends a little on the comp. But for most comps, the game plan in that case is to get to as high of a level as possible before you roll down again for legendaries and 2 star forecasts. If you're 3 starring 3 cost units, the game plan is very similar as 3 starring 2 cost units. You can play the early game however you want, and the mid game however you want. The goal is to be level 7 with 50 gold or more at stage 4-1 at the latest. From there, you slow roll for 3 stars. Usually, you will not hit until stage 5, but in general you will have to all in and roll until you hit your 3 stars at around stage 5-3 to 5-5, as people will be insanely strong on stage 5 and we can't sack most of those rounds. Once you hit the 3 stars, you will rarely be able to push to any higher of a level than level 8, and from there, you will usually add in a legendary to complement your comp, but again, the game plan after hitting 3 stars depends a lot on your comp. There are a ton of Hextech augments, but only 13 of them alters your economy, so I will touch on those here. You get 3 of them, first one on stage 1-4, then 3-3, then 4-6. In general, the econ augments are the strongest to take on 1-4 and 3-3, but on 4-6 your economy is already in a good spot so most of the time you should focus on the board strength ones there instead. Starting off with a tier 1 augments. Calculated loss gives you 2 gold and a free reroll every time you lose. You will take this augment if you are planning on playing a reroll comp where you often lose streak in the early game. It is also great when your board is weak and you know that you will have to lose streak as well. Dominance lets you get more gold from winning rounds. You only take this if you are ahead of the lobby as you will have to win in order to get value from this augment. When taking this, you should also focus on frontline and focus on leveling more aggressively than usual in addition to making more items. Hyperroll is different as it allows you to get 2 interest gold passively every turn as long as we are below 10 gold. This is great for early pressure as we can level very aggressively and even roll once or twice in the early game. It is not the worst late game if you need to donkey roll as you get a free reroll every turn in that case. Moving on to tier 2 augments. 
Clear Mind gives you 4 XP if you have a clear bench at the end of every turn. It is very hard to win streak with this as you can't hold pairs, so if you get this, you want to lost streak and then do a large level 7 all-in, or go in at level 8 earlier. Never take this augment if you are playing a reroll comp. March of Progress gives you 4 additional XP every turn, but now you can't level. This one is great for comps that slow roll for 3 cost at level 7, as you get to level 7 very fast, and you stay there until stage 5-5 where you get to level 8. Never take this if you are not playing a 3 cost or 2 cost reroll comp. Trade Sector gives you a free reroll every turn. This one is great if you are weak, as you will hit more upgrades if you are playing a reroll comp. Rich Gets Richer gives you 10 gold right away and caps your interest at 7 gold per turn. This one is great for all comps as you get an instant econ boost, but getting to 70 gold takes a long time and the extra 2 gold per turn is not that impactful, so don't get baited into staying above 70 gold for a long time. Metabolic Accelerator heals you for plus 2 HP every turn. This lets you lose streak longer, which lets you generate more gold, and it also gives you more time to slow roll for 3 stars. Moving on to tier 3 augments. We have High End Shopping, which gives you a shop that is 1 level higher. This is great for 4 cost and 5 cost carries, as you can roll for 2 star 4 costs at level 7 and 2 star 5 costs at level 8. This augment is terrible for reroll comps though. Golden Ticket gives you a 40% chance to get another reroll every time you see a new shop. This is great for reroll comps, and it's not bad for value comps. It sort of works like a better trade sector. Level Up gives you 3 additional XP every time you level, and it also lets you reach level 10. This one is terrible for reroll comps, but it's great for value comps. It is amazing early game and still okay late game if you're in a spot to push level 9 or level 10. Windfall gives you a flat amount of gold one time depending on what point in the game you're at. It is great early game to spike your economy, and it's okay late game if you need more gold to hit your 2 stars or 3 stars. Wise Spending gives you 2 XP every time you reroll. This one makes it so that you should never buy XP, and you should always reroll to level up. This gives you even more upgrades before you level up and lets you hit more units on the way there. It is an amazing augment in the early game, and still okay in the late game. If you want to learn more about all the other augments, check out my augment guide, it will be linked down in the description. Since we did go through a lot here, I will link a cheat sheet on my discord server and the hashtag TFT resources to improve, so if you want access to that, that link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, if you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, comment down below what video you want me to do next, and if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord. We get over 3,000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care and see you in the next video.